So this is a Dynakit Stereo 70 that I picked up originally from a uh, garage sale. When I got it, it was a rusty old Hulk. Um, I didn't know if I could salvage anything from it. And uh, when I say this amplifier, it's a bit of a misnomer because actually there isn't a whole lot left from that original amplifier. The only thing that's left is this uh, cage on the outside here and the transformers. So this chassis. The original chassis was all rusty and I just I couldn't save it without removing what was left of the uh, pad printing on the front here. So I ended up buying a new chassis from a place called uh, Vacuum Tube Audio or Tubes for Hi-Fi they're called now. Uh, they specialize in these old Dyna Company amplifiers. So these amplifiers were super common and they were so popular that not only are there, you can still find old ones floating around, but um, there are several companies out there that will sell you kits to build a brand new one. They, they make the transformers, they make the chassis like you see here, they make, they make everything. You can build the whole kit from scratch with brand new parts. You can even get the cages new, but this one's original. So inside you got the classic Stereo 70, so 70 stands for 70 watts, but that's uh, 70 watts total. It's 35 watts per channel. This is uh, not an original board, obviously. Um, the original preamp board on this amp is uh, somewhat notorious for being terrible. Uh, it, used, um, it used a very rare tube called a 7199, two of them. And the 7199 is a combination tube. It's got one section inside of it is a, a high gain section and the other side is a, a low gain section and they, the two are put together, it gives you your input and your face splitter in one tube envelope. But uh, nowadays you can't find those and they're really not that great sounding anyway so this particular one uses uh, 12 AT7s which are um, in the same family as the uh, common guitar amp tubes uh, that you can still get today. Um, the AT7 is uh, somewhat more linear than the AX7 or AU7 is, and it's sort of a middle of the road uh, in terms of amplification factor. Uh, but anyway, the point is that uh, this preamp tube is far superior to the original, much more linear. Uh, it's a long tail pair type of face splitter instead of um, the concertina type, so it's uh, better at overdriving the output tubes. Uh, these output tubes are. EL34s. They are Millard reissues, so they're really just uh, Russian made uh, reflector tubes uh, rebranded as Millard. This is the rectifier. It's a GZ34 uh, half wave rectifier. And this is the filter capacitor for the high voltage power supplies. Power transformer, output transformers. So these two little switches back here, those are an added feature. Um, these holes were originally where the um, trim pots would be for setting the bias, but uh, the new board has them right on the board here. So instead they put these little switches in there and they let you switch um, how the screens are controlled on the output tubes. So this is an ultralinear amplifier it's called, uh, where there's some feedback from the output transformers back to the pentodes and it just makes for a, uh, a small feedback circuit here for a more linear response or you can flip them into triode mode which will just hold the screen at the same voltage as the plate which makes a pentode act or a tetrode act as a triode and the EL34 makes for a pretty nice triode actually so these front connectors are um, originally for um, powering a preamp you would jack them in there with these harnesses and they would go to a preamp a PA three I think and uh, but I'm not using it for that I actually uh, hijacked the uh, this one that says bias set here uh, the opposite one so each 
each of these pins lets me put a probe in there and I can check the voltage, the bias voltage through this connector. Uh, this mono stereo switch is not connected anymore. So here's the underbelly. You can see everything is new. <laughs> um, new as in, I, I rebuilt this like, oh, about 15, 20 years ago. So new is a relative term. Uh, the coupling capacitors to the output tubes are these uh, Russian paper and oil caps, uh, which are some pretty nice sounding caps. They were a little bit, didn't like them at first, but after they, uh, I used them for a while, they started to sound better. And then these are orange drops um, for the uh, input to uh, phase splitter stage. Everything else is um, all modern components, so should last forever. This is a choke for the... Um, uh, B plus uh, plate supply and it's got some nice speaker connectors instead of the crappy uh, little screw terminals that the original one had and these adjustments here are a fine adjustment for the uh, long-tailed pair so tubes for hi-fi is still in business um, they've changed the design of this board a couple of times now they've been selling this board for almost 30 years uh, but they have sort of revved it a few times and my version is a little bit different than the, the one they sell currently. But, um, but yeah, if, you, uh, if you're really, uh, really want a uh, ST70, you can still make one yourself. So like I said, the power tubes I have in there right now are these uh, quote-unquote reissue Millard uh, EL34s. These are uh, reflector-made tubes from Russia. Uh, re rebadged as a Millard. I've also tried uh, JJ's uh, KT77 in here, which is sort of a it's a beam tetrode sort of version of the uh, EL34 pentode. And it's got a little more oomph than the uh, EL34 has. I've also tried the original Svetlana winged C. When you see winged C, they're referring to this this logo up here. So New Sensor, who sort of is licensing the Millard and the Tung Sol names to sell their Russian-made tubes from the reflector plant, they also, in the United States, stole Svetlana's own brand from them through some kind of licensing snafu. So that's why these are referred to as Winged C. The name of the company was originally Svetlana, but um, New Sensor now owns the Svetlana names and sells tubes under that brand. Um, but it doesn't matter anymore because uh, Winged C, which was a different factory in Russia, which made, in my opinion, superior tubes to uh, Reflector, uh, they shut down some years ago and they don't make these anymore. But this is an awesome sounding EL34. I wish I had bought more before they uh, disappeared. I also have these Valvart EL34s. These are just uh, Chinese-made tubes. Actually, they're these are pretty nice. Actually, these are pretty good-sounding EL34s. They're in kind of a big bottle, slightly larger than um, EL34s typically are. It's not an issue for this amp, but I know some guitar amps, especially ones that have straps that hold the tubes down, um, these big bottles don't fit. And when I was pulling these tubes out to show you, I noticed that one of my valve arts looks like this. Notice anything different? The getter's gone. So what happened to this one is um, probably a pin broke in the base, and uh, or it was just defective from the start. Air leaked into the envelope, and the getter, which is that silver stuff, tries to absorb the air that's floating around inside the tube to keep a hard vacuum. But eventually. Uh, all the getter disappears and you end up with this white powdery look. So if you ever see a tube on eBay or something that looks like this or you see a, a white ring around the silver, that means the getter is wearing. If it looks like this, the tube is shot. If I, if I tried to power up this tube, it would just short out because it's full of air. It would act like a, a neon bulb. So my goal today is just to uh, clean the amp up a little bit, dust it off. It's a little dusty inside. And... Uh, do a little checkup on the bias and make sure everything looks good and then put it back. I use this amp in my uh, main system to power speakers in the other room. They're uh, Boston acoustic speakers that are not very efficient so they need some 
need some oomph to sound good. So yeah, I can't be driving those with a set amp. I need a nice big push-pull amp like this one. All right, got all my meters hooked up. Let's fire it up and see how it looks. Got my uh, input sorted as well. This is an indirectly heated uh, rectifier, so it comes up nice and slowly, which is actually a good thing. So I've been letting the uh, amp just kind of settle in here, and I'm watching the bias currents, and they're holding pretty steady, actually. They look pretty good. Um, they haven't changed much since I originally set them, it looks like. There's a 10 ohm resistor between the uh, cathode of the tube and ground. And that's what I'm measuring across here. I'm measuring across that 10 ohm resistor. So I'm seeing 400 millivolts, for example, here, which equals 40 milliamps of current through the tube. So they're all they're a little high. My goal is 40. A couple of them are a little bit higher than they should be, so I'll tweak them. They're very touchy pots, unfortunately. Never get them perfect, but get them in the ballpark. Another thing to keep in mind too, these are not regulated power supplies. They're somewhat a slave to whatever power is coming out of your outlet, which can vary depending on the time of day, whether or not your air conditioning is on. So don't obsess too much about getting them exact because they won't be exact an hour later anyway because your line voltage will have changed. One other thing too I wanted to point out was this is a dangerous amplifier to have around without the cage. Um, if you get one of these and you, you don't have the cage I strongly recommend you get the cage because there is very high voltages exposed on this circuit board here. So it's uh, not safe for pets or children or even adults. Alright so this amp looks good. Alright so the ST70 is all tuned up and ready to rock and roll, so uh, thanks for watching. Let's let it crank.